Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar about how to design an efficient terahertz filter. My name is Amin. I am Arab application engineer at EMWorks. This is brief overview of the uh, presentation. So first we'll talk about the uh, terahertz technology. Uh, following that challenges and application of terahertz technology will be presented. After that filter design challenges and some simulation results will be demonstrated. At the end we have a live demo. So in case if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. All right, so let's talk about the terahertz technology. Uh, several researchers, both in academia and the industry, have already started investigating the use of terahertz technology due to its uh, promising uh, features. <coughs> terahertz band is sandwiched between the microwave and infrared spectra, as can be seen from the image on the top right hand side. Uh, for terahertz band, it covers frequencies from 100 gigahertz up to 10 terahertz. Uh, one of the main advantages of the terahertz is its transparency to many material. Uh, this is an important feature as it allows seeing through materials. Uh, unlike X-rays, uh, terahertz is non-ionizing and is not harmful for biological tissues. It can penetrate uh, several materials such as clothing, skin, paper, cardboard, plastic, wood, and ceramics. Uh, the other advantage of terahertz is that it allows for good spatial resolution, which is important for rendering quality images. Uh, for terahertz, it can also be used for uh, imaging, uh, and this helps, for example, detecting explosives or weapon-making materials, as can be demonstrated uh, in the image on the bottom right-hand side. Uh, now we have talked about the uh, terahertz technology, now let's look at some of its challenges. Although it has some uh, promising uh, characteristics, it still has some challenges and limitations that need to be overcome. Uh, atmospheric attenuation is one of the main uh, challenges. Uh, as the wave travels in the atmosphere, it gets absorbed by water and oxygen molecules. Uh, free space uh, path loss is uh, another problem that cannot be avoided. Uh, as the wave travels in the air, it gets attenuated by square of uh, carrier frequency and the traveling distance. Uh, as a result, the wave cannot travel for longer distances. And this is why the terahertz can only be used for short-range communication. Uh, it cannot penetrate metal, concrete, or water. Uh, for instance, it cannot be used to uh, inspect uh, cargo containers or diagnose deep inside the human body. Uh, terahertz wave cannot be efficiently generated by optical or microwave uh, sources. Uh, current terahertz devices can only generate a uh, few milliwatt of power, and this requires complicated and expensive systems for detection. All right, so let's look at uh, some areas where terahertz technology is being used. Uh, terahertz Technology is important especially for 6G communication as this allows for fast transmission of huge amount of uh, data. Uh, several researchers have already started investigating the use of the terahertz band for 6G communication. Uh, it can also be used for early detection of cancer, screening of envelopes and small packages as well as for the inspection, astronomy and chemical fingerprinting. Uh, for instance, Using uh, chemical fingerprinting, uh, trucks or vehicles uh, carrying explosives can be easily detected. Uh, on the right, we have two images uh, showing some application of terrorist technology. Uh, the top showing um, detection of concealed gun, while the second image shows uh, detection of uh, missing food items such as a chocolate bar. All right, <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, some of the filter design challenges. Uh, there are several factors that um, affect the filter operation, and this includes sensitivity to small changes in the physical dimensions, electrical conductivity, surface roughness, skin depth, losses, and heat. We'll try to explain each of these in the upcoming slides with some of examples. Uh, today we'll be looking at two uh, types of filter, low-pass and uh, band-pass filter. 
now we'll start with the low pass filter uh, for low pass spoof surface plasmon polariton or ssp filter is used uh, the filter is uh, physically small it's made of copper for the substrate polymide with dielectric constant of 2.9 and low tangent of o of 0.003 is used uh, at the bottom left hand side so we have 3d picture of the filter on right we have a picture for electric field intensity so let's look at some of the uh, simulation results uh, looking at the graph on right so we can see that the uh, the ssp filter has a cutoff frequency of almost 730 gigahertz uh, when we change the uh, the material from copper to gold so we can see that the the cutoff frequency drastically drops from um, from 730 GHz to 100 GHz. Uh, and the reason for this is that uh, the gold it has less electrical conductivity as compared to copper. Uh, as a result, more losses will be uh, generated. Uh, surface roughness is also another parameter that can affect the performance of the uh, filter. Uh, looking at the plot on the right, uh, we can see as the uh, surface roughness increases, the losses also increases. As a result, uh, the bandwidth is decreased. Uh, for instance, uh, for a filter with a flat uh, surface, it has a cut of frequency of 1.2 terahertz while a uh, filter with surface roughness of 5 uh, micrometer it has cut of frequency of 730 that's that's significant to drop uh, and the, the reason behind this is that at terahertz the frequency is uh, very high so as the frequency increases the uh, skin depth becomes less than the surface roughness so the wave will travel longer distances which results in more losses uh, <clears throat> the physical dimension can also have an effect on the performance on, of the filter. Uh, for example, in this example, we wanted to study the effect of changing the physical dimension L. Uh, when L decreases, the losses also decreases. And so, for instance, at, uh, at frequency of 1.0 terahertz, <clears throat> we can see there is there's almost 2 dB difference in terms of the insertion loss for only for only a few microns of physical dimension change. Uh, and, and the reason for this is because now at terahertz the frequency is uh, very short. So now any changes in the filter, even if it's in the order of microns, can also have a big effect uh, on the filter. So it's very important to study the effect of uh, uh, changing the physical dimension. All right, so let's look at the uh, band uh, pass uh, filter. Uh, the filter is again uh, physically small. It's made of gold. Uh, on the right, we have a picture of fridged uh, waveguide uh, filter. Uh, uh, on the left, we have an animation of the uh, electric field. Uh, looking at the graph on on the left, we can see that the uh, filter has uh, has a wide bandwidth of almost 120 gigahertz, and a passband from 180 gigahertz up to 300 gigahertz. Uh, <coughs> studying the temperature distribution is important, especially in terahertz. Uh, during the uh, filter operation, the conductor and dielectric losses can be converted uh, into heat. So at terahertz, since the uh, losses are can be significantly high, so it's important to study the the temperature distribution. Uh, looking at the temperature distribution uh, on the right, uh, we can see that the maximum temperature that the filter reaches is uh, 43 celsius and this is still safe and within the uh, standard uh, limits and now we will have uh, a live uh, demo 
will be showing you how to design and simulate uh, such filters using HFWorks. Uh, this is uh, HFWorks and this is uh, SOLIDWORKS. Uh, HFWorks is fully embedded in SOLIDWORKS and it's called certified by SOLIDWORKS. In uh, HFWorks, we have uh, four types of study. We have uh, antennas, as parameter, TDR, and resonance. But today we'll be focusing on the as parameter. Uh, for each study, we almost have three main steps. Uh, so first, we need to specify the accuracy, the uh, frequency range, uh, the mesh, so you can use the manual mesh, or if you don't know how to use the manual mesh, you can set it to adaptive. Also, we can do the uh, thermal analysis. Next, uh, we need to apply materials. In HFOX, we have uh, material lab library, which consists of several uh, materials from different vendors. So, for instance, here we have uh, material from uh, uh, Rogers and uh, Mitsubishi. Next is uh, setting up the uh, boundary condition. We have uh, different boundary conditions. We have port, lumped port, <coughs> lumped element, PEC, PMC, PEC symmetry, PMC, and imperfect electric uh, conductor. Also the signal and resistive surface. Uh, the last step is uh, kind of optional so if you know how to uh, so if you know how to do the mesh you can use uh, a mesh control if you want to use mesh control say you right click say apply mesh control so you can apply mesh on uh, bodies surfaces or edges you can also specify the element size uh, also uh, also you can specify the surface roughness since it's an important parameter, especially in uh, terahertz. So, for instance, here we can specify the surface conductivity. Uh, in this example, we choose the gold and surface surface of 0.5 micrometer. All right, so let's look at some of the uh, results. In uh, HFOX, we have what we call the results table. Uh, under the results table, we can see uh, different uh, circuit parameters such as ACE matrix, renormalized ACE matrix, impedance matrix, uh, port results, uh, VSWR. You can uh, export results to different formats, such as uh, text, CIT, SPC, or touchstone. Uh, you can uh, also print versus current frequency or all frequencies. Uh, also, we have the 2D plot. So this is the plot that we looked at earlier in the presentation. And this is uh, the insertion loss and the return loss. To generate this plot, so under plot, you right click, you say the 2D plot. And then you choose as parameter. You can choose VSW or any other parameters. And then you can specify which parameter you want to plot, S11 or S21. And then you said add, So for example, S11 and then as to one and then we said add so so this is the figure uh, also we have the electric uh, field so this is the uh, electric uh, field distribution we can also animate the electric field versus phase so now we can clearly see the electric field uh, uh, animation Uh, also, we can do the thermal coupling. So here we can see, for instance, that uh, this is the temperature distribution for the uh, filter operating at 240 gigahertz. So the maximum temperature is uh, 43. So, so basically for the coupling case, so under coupling, so, so under coupling properties, so you can specify the input power and you can choose the, the frequency and uh, also for the thermal so we have um, different uh, uh, thermal conditions temperature com convection heat flux volume heat radiation and so on uh, all right so let's look at the ssp filter or uh, which is a low pass uh, filter 
So again, it's uh, following the uh, same steps. So let's look at some of the uh, results. So again, in the 2D plot, so we can see, for instance, here the, uh, the search loss and the return loss for the uh, for the copper filter. Also, we can compare between uh, two scenarios. So, for example, scenario one we had uh, copper, and for scenario two, for scenario two, sorry, we changed the uh, we changed uh, copper to gold. So we can clearly see the the difference in terms of S21. Uh, we can also uh, see again the electric field. We can also animate. So this is for the uh, for low pass filter. Uh, also in HFworks, uh, you don't need to copy paste. You only you can. Uh, you can just like uh, let's click and say generate report so here you have like uh, different parameters that you want to uh, uh, save and then let's say I put here author is I mean and then company is uh, EM works and then I put today's date and then say and then we have like two different formats we have HTML and the word so after that we hit OK So this is the uh, HTML uh, file. So for, for instance, we want to see the the uh, the 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 insertion loss of of copper and gold. You can clearly see it here. The same thing if we want to see the insertion loss and return loss for copper. So basically, it's very handy. You don't need to copy or paste anything. Uh, so next, uh, also if you want to see the um, the effect of uh, surface softness, so now if we see in the definition. So for example, in this example, we specify the surface softness of five uh, micrometer, and we have the matter which is uh, copper. And then under two D plot, so we can uh, uh, print uh, versus the different uh, uh, studies. So again, we can see that uh, the difference and uh, the influence of the surface offense on the performance of uh, uh, the filter. Uh, also, uh, if you want to study the, um, the fact of the physical dimension, we do what we call the uh, parameterization study. So in the parameterization study, so once we choose uh, the length we want, or, or when we choose the dimension we want to parameterize, after that, uh, so here we have the minimum and maximum value. We have also the step size. Now, uh, next, we need to say uh, click uh, generate scenarios. So, for instance, here we want to study two scenarios. The first one has 17.5 uh, micrometer, and the second is has 20 uh, micrometer. So, next, uh, in the 2D plot, so we can um, uh, plot uh, versus uh, scenario, as it can be seen here both the insertion loss and the return loss. All right, here comes the end of the live uh, demo. So to uh, summarize, you have seen the effect of electrical conductivity, surface reference, and physical dimensions on the performance of the terahertz filter. Choosing the right conductor, such as gold and copper, can help reduce losses during the filter functioning. The terahertz filter is very sensitive to small changes in the physical dimensions. For example, few microns can have big influence on the filter. <coughs> Increasing surface roughness results in more losses in the filter as the wave travels longer as compared with flat surfaces. Uh, during the operation of the filter, the conductant dielectric losses can be converted into heat, and this can lead to the filter breakdown. By performing thermal analysis, we can analyze the breakdown of the filter by studying its temperature distribution. We have demonstrated to you how HFWorks help us address those challenges and improve the filter performance at terahertz frequencies. With that, I would like to thank you, and now the floor is open for questions. Thanks.